Hello, welcome back to part two of the review tutorial series. Let's recall very quickly about what we did in part one. We created uh, three packages, including the model package. And under the model package, we actually had a class called products. And specifically, we declare six different attributes over here. Most of them, specifically six, uh, four out of six, we actually declare the so-called primitive type attributes. You can see the value that is actually stored in each attribute at the runtime will be a simple value, like a, an integer, a Boolean true or false, or it may be a double value with the fractional part. They are simple values. On the other hand, the two attributes model and finish, they are of the so-called reference type. And the string class is actually an existing class from the Java API library. And in this part two, we are actually going to focus on this type of attributes called the reference type attributes. Every attributes, rather than storing just a simple value like an integer, boolean, or double, we're going to store an address of some objects in the memory. So we're going to store the address. Even though the address itself is actually a simple value, but the address itself will indirectly refer to something that can be as complicated as possible, which is an object. So that's something I will also try to visualize to you as well. But I just want to verbally to actually clarify what's going to be the direction I'm heading to. Okay, so rather than using an existing class uh, like a string for the Java API, we're going to use some existing class from the projects, meaning that we're going to create new classes in our projects and we're going to use them as the types for the attributes for reference type decoration. And furthermore, not only that the attributes may be a uh, reference type, it can also be multi-valued reference type attributes, uh, attributes, meaning that it might be a pointer to an array of such uh, addresses. That's something I will also uh, need to cover as well for the review purpose, but we'll get there. All right, so that's about the uh, part you want to recall very uh, quickly uh, from uh, the part one. And then just don't forget, you also, you were supposed to study up to slide 49 uh, for the classes and object slides. So that's something uh, you're supposed to have done uh, before you actually move on to part two. All right, so let, let's now uh, develop a new class and the class is called entry. Let me uh, let us declare the uh, class first, and then I'll ex explain what it's uh, what the role it is playing uh, in the whole pa uh, in the whole projects. Let me close the uh, products over here, and we want to create a new model class. So under the model package, right click on the model package and say new, and then class over here, and then we'll call that entry. Okay, just make sure you spell it correctly, and it should be capitalized e e n t r y entry. You can th think about entry is like a unit of storage. And then we want to say we have a an Apple store, like an Apple refurbished shop. It's more like a database and with a database of storage. And we want to say every unit of storage is an entry. So we got a collection of entries basically for the Apple shop. All right, so this will be a model package. So we don't really want to create any main method. Just make sure you don't check it. And we'll say finish over here. Okay, so that's an entry class. And what attributes do we like? So let's uh, maximize it. There are two attributes I need only just for this, uh, just for this class. The, and as, uh, as before, we're going to declare pro uh, attributes as private and we're going to say private. So that means they're only visible within this class. And then I'll put some description for the class as well in just a moment. And the first one is going to be, uh, which I mentioned earlier in part one, when I spoke about the uh, motivating problem for Apple refurbished shop every product should really be uniquely identified by some serial number. That's, that's really what, what happened in real life. For example, whenever you want to send your uh, Apple device, maybe for repair, Apple always asks you for what's the serial number. So they will be able to use a serial number to look up the complete product specification and also complete product history so that they can do the repair uh, for you. So I would say string type and then serial number. And serial number, one example would be, I can simply say maybe F9, FDN4, NKQ1, GC, right? Doesn't really matter what a serial number is, it's only for illustration purpose, but it's really important to notice that the serial number should be unique, meaning that no two products should really have the same serial number, no two products, okay? So that's the first one. What about the second attributes? We're going to say private again, but this time I'm going to refer to some existing class, not from the Java API, but from the current projects. So what I will do is, let me just show to you before I declare that, we're going to say 
under the current projects, and I'm going to refer to specifically a class under the model package, a class that we created for part one, which is the product class. I'm going to refer to that. Okay, let me put it there and now uh, make some notes about what it really means and what, the, uh, what kind of implication uh, it is. Okay, so product is some exi uh, existing class and then what should be the attribute name? You know, I can just call it products. That's okay. And notice one thing uh, in case that's confusing to you. The all lowercase products over here is the name of the attributes. On the other hand, the capital P products here is the type of the attributes. Okay, so let me put it down over here. The type of attributes is a reference type. Okay, so here when I say reference, I really meant uh, address, right? Remember I said before, I might just use reference and address interchangeably uh, throughout the tutorial series. So the type of the attribute is simply a reference type, meaning that it would denote an existing class. In this case, product does uh, does exist. Where does it ex uh, where does it exist? It exists uh, under the model package over here. Okay, uh, here products. Okay, and one thing I want to mention more uh, to this particular attributes. Consequently, consequently, at the runtime, these attributes will store the address or reference let me in this case i can say address will store the address of some products sorry not project products objects over here right yeah if you really like i can very quickly change this uh comments over here to be multi-line okay just uh to make it appear a little bit nicer you know what? I, let me uh, just do it again. Sorry. Let me cut this. Let me put it here. I think this will be better. Okay. And then, so that will be like that. Okay. So that's the multi-line uh, comments I want to have. Okay. Just put the tab over here. Just make sure it's properly indented. And of course, I got to fix my typo, uh, typo here. Okay, so that's about this attribute here. It's a reference type of type products referring to some existing class in the model package products. And then at the runtime, this product attributes is going to store the address of some product objects. And I'll visualize that to you when we declare the different methods and do the tracing. And let me now document very quickly for this uh, entry class. Again, I want to do multi-line comments. I would say this is actually a template of a unit of storage in the Apple refurbish shop. Remember Apple refurbish shop, you can think about it, it's more like a collection, a database. And then it will store many units uh, of Apple products over there. Every unit is going to be represented by an entry. Every entry is gonna consist of two things. One thing is the serial number for uniquely identifying uh, the particular products uh, in the entry. And also the product will be the associated entry. Uh, sorry, it will be the associated products uh, for the uh, serial number. So that's uh, uh, how you interpret that, okay? Think of uh, a shop, like a refurbished shop, as a collection of entries. And here, I, when I say collection, of course, I'm making that very general. There are different ways you can implement a collection in Java. And the way we chose to, uh, the way we were chose to do in this tutorial series is to use the primitive array use, using the square brackets notation, which you learned from the first year, but we're gonna review that completely. Alternatively, uh, for your own practice, you may choose to implement a collection maybe as uh, some Java, Java collection library class, like array list or link list, or even hash table. But that's something I'll leave that to you, okay, if you want to do that. Okay, so we got these two attributes now. So now what can we do? So that's the, uh, well, so, uh, we only gonna have these two attributes. So now we're gonna think about, we need, uh, how do we create a new object of type entry? In that case, we need a constructor. And also how do we retrieve 
attribute values from uh, the entry objects, in which case we need accessors. And how do we modify values of attributes of an entry, in which case we need uh, mutators, right, we, uh, for different purposes. And remember in the part one, you're supposed to review the, the slides on the definition for the various methods. I assume you have done that already. Otherwise, you will, you will already find it difficult to follow the uh, uh, part two of the tutorial series. Okay, so let's now, first of all, we can declare some constructor. And for the constructor, we can either declare the default one without any parameters, or maybe you can declare some overloaded one, maybe with some parameter. Let me just choose the latter. Let me choose some of, uh, de declare the uh, overloaded one. So public, all the constructors should be public, right? Because you want outside classes to be able to create entry objects. So it should be of the same name as the class. And now, in order for me to create entry objects, I need some extra information in order to create it, unless I want it to be default constructor, in which case I don't want to, uh, right, in this uh, scenario. Okay, so I can say entry, I can say string, and then I can say serial number. I can just choose the same name as the attribute name. I just need this keyword to disambiguate, right? We, we, we already reviewed that in part one. And products, products, right? Okay, so now how can we uh, initialize the attributes using the constructor? We can say this uh, serial number is assigned to serial number. And also this uh, products is assigned to products. And you can see the color of the serial number here is different from the color of this serial number over here. They simply refer to uh, different parts, right? This serial number here on the right hand side refers to the parameter. This serial number over here refers to the attributes, right? It's really important uh, to emphasize. Now that we got the constructor, now we need the various methods. Uh, remember, we also said before that for the standard accessors and mutators for accessing or mutating attribute values, you can generate them if you wish. You don't need to type them out to waste your time. You can feel free, but of course, if you want to type, uh, that's also fine. Let me try to generate them. I would choose uh, these two attributes from which I want to generate the setters and getters. I'll choose them, right click, and then I would say source, and then I would choose generate getters and setters over here. Choose that, and then now I got these two attributes, and then for each one of them, I want to generate get products, set products, get, uh, get serial number, and set serial number. Uh, these are the four I need. So I would choose them all, and also choose them all. And I want to maybe put them at the end, put them maybe after the uh, entry, uh, the overloaded constructor I just declared, okay? And maybe sort by getters and set a pair. I think that's fine, okay? You can uh, definitely do the way you like. I think, uh, again, order of the methods does not really matter in Java. I'll say generates. So now I got all the four uh, default getters and setters over here. And then notice one thing here. Here, since we don't have any parameters over here that clashes with the attribute name, meaning that we don't have any variable shadowing, that means that this keyword is not necessary. However, it does not hurt. It is not incorrect if you put it. That's okay, but it's kind of up to you. On the other hand, you can see for status over here, since we are using a parameter whose name clashes with for example, the serial number over here with the attribute, right? You can see clashes with that. So variable shadowing will be in effects. In that case, we must use this dot serial number. That's why you can see the automatically generated version of the uh, uh, setters over here. They would actually put this dot in front of the uh, serial number on the left hand side for the target of the assignment, right? That's also something I cover in part one, but I'd like to just uh, re revisit quickly.